lady. First Lady Mark II was built around a particle lift system just like all the buildings in the city. I read all about it in the Columbian Scientific. The particle seated at the top of the structure must be up that lift. Perfect. Seems like a lot of technology just to float an airship. Comstock never heard of hydrogen. The First Lady Mark I did run on hydrogen and it was destroyed by a single bullet from a Vox sniper. Unfortunately, the Prophet wasn't on board at the time. If I take the active particle, then the First Lady is just a 40-ton paperweight. Best to take the spare. Well, let's head back to that side of the deal. No, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. How do you plan on handling Atlas? He ain't just some spliced up maniac. He'll make a mistake. I just have to be ready to take advantage of it when it happens. All for a girl you barely know. How well did you know me when you came to Columbia? Pretty lady not finished yet. What? Open the tear. Power for devices, very expensive. Need for that? Just tell me what you want. So John wanted something as simple. Lock of hair. Oh, you're not serious. Not your hair, stupid. Think Hodge's cigarette light. Mothballed, forgotten. In there, hair sample. In jar. Cannot miss it. You get for Sutra, then everybody friends. Where is his lab? Closed off, past Fink's quarters. Um, you smart lady, you find. Should have seen that one coming. Vox Populi, we must have arrived right in the middle of the siege. That means the other you and I are probably inside the factory on our way up to the first lady. And what happens if we run into ourselves? We won't. How do you know that? Because we didn't. done me good service, but I will not hurt the boy. I will see Fink and Comstock burn, but I will not hold the son to account for the deeds of his father. You've misunderstood us. We neither asked you to harm the child. Nor did we promise that yours would be the hand that would set Comstock's world afire. A famous man once said... And a famous man shall say... I may reach the mountaintop. But I fear I shall never visit the valley below. But you mean I won't live to see the... <sighs> No. It's up to you what matters more. Your part in the play. Or the play itself. Someone is coming. She'll arrive a girl. She must leave a woman. And what makes the difference between a girl and a woman? Blood. Your part in the play. Or the play itself. Turn her into a killer? How? Give the girl no choice. And she will be forced to make one.
us what the people need. But sometimes I feel that all I have to offer them is blood and f Change. That's what the people need. But sometimes I feel that all I have to offer them is blood and fire. The things they've done to me, I can't forget them. I was Columbia's victim, and victimhood begets shame. Oh, what element of human experience is more corrosive than shame? I'm rotted from the inside out. For this revolution except my own dark motivations when all is said and done what's more important to me the people i want to save are those i want to murder in their beds Quarters got reassigned, all right. I'm sleeping in Fink's bed tonight. <laughs> you can't hide forever. Chasing my own shit. Can't stop me this time. There's a war coming. You can smell it in the air. Fear. Hatred. People dying every day. But how many more will suffer if we rise up? Violence begets violence. I know this. I've seen this. The rational mind argues for a peaceful solution to find a common ground, but what common ground is there to find for a father who watches his child bleed out in the street? How'd he deny him his vengeance? I know that fire that burns deep inside. I know it all too well. And when the time comes, will I be able to stay to hand? So look at that clock.
current state of being, or lack thereof, has left my brother unfulfilled. The biological urge to leave one's mark is strong, and it is not an impossibility. We could instantiate ourselves back in Colombia, return to an old life for the possibility of creating new. But we died in that world. Returning would mean giving up part of us. Ourselves. We'd become flesh and all that it is heir to. The mysteries of the universe would become once again mysteries. What's that thing you just picked up? My guess is that it has something to do with that giant clock out there. And that clock has something to do with opening the door to... A giant clock? Sort of. Looks like the mechanism unlocks certain activities when Fink gives us blessing. So what? We're stuck waiting for the cuckoo to go off? No. We've already found the clock key. Manually wind it. Open whatever door we please. Sure seems like a lot of work to lock down a few doors. You know, if there's one thing Fink loves, it's a lot of work. If there is a god, and I've seen more evidence to the contrary than in support, you'd think he'd have put Adam into the belly of a nice little seagull or crow. The cost of all these underwater expeditions are murdering my margins. As to the matter of religion... Let me place myself in the camp of the agnostic. I pretend to understand the mysteries of the infinite no more than you, Comstock, or anyone else for that matter. But for the sake of argument, let's say this is all one unhappy accident, and we all alone in our toils. Then who would Comstock use to control and shame us with rules that apply only to those without a penny in their pocket? If there were no God, you could rest assured the first deed done by the first rich man would be inventing him. Good. How to get that idiot his lock of hair? Are you there? I'm 
miss you. You were the only one who ever... You were my only friend. Hooker. I'm not even here. I'm a projection of your own. Could you humor me then? Please. I think Hooker would miss you. Yeah.